space. Measure the span of the liver along the mid clavicular line. Ensure that the centimeter marking is facing away and only revealed after the measurement is made. For the spleen, percuss for the inferior border. Measurement is made at a diagonal angle away from the mid clavicular line. If the spleen is minimally enlarged, percuss the drop space to confirm dullness in that area. The drop space consists of 9, 10, and 11 left intercostal spaces. Following this, percuss for shifting dullness. This is done by percussing from the umbilical area to the left flank, noting the area where the percussion note changes from resonant to dull. Put a finger on the area where the change of percussion note is heard. Then ask the patient to lie in the right lateral position. Wait for 5 seconds and percuss at the same point. If the percussion note now is resonant, compared to dull previously, this indicates presence of ascites. If the amount of ascites is moderate to large, a fruit trill may be detected. This is done by asking the patient to put one hand at the umbilical area. The right side of the abdomen is flicked with the right middle finger while the left hand is resting on the left side of the abdomen. We try to feel for transmitted impulses from one side of the abdomen to the other through the accumulated intra-abdominal fluid. Alternatively, a succussion splash may be heard if there is a large amount of ascites. This is done by flicking one side of the abdomen using the right hand and listening for the splash of intraperitoneal fluid. This is a close-up shot for demonstration of percussion for shifting dullness. This is done by percussing from the umbilical area to the left flank. Note the area where the percussion note changes from resonant to dull. Ask the patient to lie in the right lateral position. Wait for 5 seconds and percuss at the same point. If the percussion note is now resonant compared to dull previously, this indicates presence of ascites. One of the final stages in physical examination of the abdomen is auscultation, 
first escorted for vowel sounds. This is best done in one of the four quadrants of the abdomen. Other vowel sounds increase or decrease in frequency. Next is escaltation of hepatic or splenic bruit if hepato or splenomegaly was previously detected. Are there any venous humps? Finally, try to listen for a renal bruit. This is best heard at an area 2 cm above the umbilicus and 2 cm to the left. Then 2 cm above the umbilicus and 2 cm to the right. It is usually heard using the bell of the stethoscope which is lightly applied to the anterior abdominal wall. If there is a suspicion of malignancy, check the leaf nodes in the cervical and axillary area for any enlargement. Leaf adenopathy denotes presence of malignancy, for example lymphoma or primary gastrointestinal tumors with metastasis. Usually, the lymph node examination is performed at the end of specific gastrointestinal examination. To complete the physical examination, the examiner may also want to, do, uh, to examine the external genitalia as well as doing a perrectal examination. Lastly, always remember to thank the patient for allowing to be examined. Put the patient back in a comfortable position and cover up before leaving.